Right then, this is my tutorial on how to make either a patch lead or terminate your Cat6, Cat5 leads with Cat5 or Cat6 plugs. The ones I'm using, they're called Easy Wire or Through Wire Cat6 plugs. And the advantage of those is the wires will pass up through the end so you can count the colours, correct you've got them in the correct, check you've got them in the correct order. Uh, before you crimp it and waste your plug. They're slightly more expensive than the ones that you do your sort of wires to length and crimp, but the advantage being they're far quicker and far more reliable. You're likely to be able to count eight pins uh, each time you do one. They're what I use all the time, I don't bother with the other, but I mean, not massively expensive. I think 50 of these on Amazon, I will put a link below, but it's about 18 pounds or something for 50. Uh, tools I'm going to use for this today. Wire cutters, to cut my cable to length. I've got some cheap crimpers here. These won't actually trim them at the end, but we'll have a look in a bit, but they're cheap. Five to ten pounds, just for something that crimps the cable or crimps the plug. You can use this cable stripper. I don't bother using one usually because it's an extra tool in my pocket that I can't be bothered to carry. So I usually just use the Stanley knife and generally score around the outside of the case in to remove it uh, and usually I use either a screwdriver or a wire cutters just to straighten the cable as I've cut it off. Also I've got some Cat6 cable here so that is Cat6 it's the same process for either Cat5 or Cat6 where I can use Cat6 I would generally use it because it's better quality this is full copper throughout so it's not coated aluminium it is proper copper this one's only purple because it's for a sort of new build installation where they require low smoke. So that's it. So we'll drop down and take a close up and we'll get it started. Oh, last thing is, this isn't necessarily essential, but myself, I'd always use one. This one, that's a Lindy branded one. That's a Cat6 tester. So when we've got it, that's the sort of sender end. We'll put the plug in. So plug into there. And on the receiver end, plug into there, and it should count eight pins counting down from one to eight. If it doesn't, then something's wrong. So I'll just switch that off. Cool, we'll crack on. So there's my piece of Cat6. I'm going to make this into a patch lead. So first things first, we'll look. So this is a cable stripper dedicated tool for Cat6 or Cat5 just to remove that outer casing so basically it's got a small blade in there that will clamp to the outside casing and you can just spin it around there remove it and that's the casing cut through but generally I'll just use a Stanley knife myself and I'll just gently what I'll do is put it on there and just gently score around that outer casing being careful not to cut into the actual wire beneath that case in there. The next thing is this bit of fiberglass sort of cable in there I remove. That's for tearing down the casing. So I've got a portion of wire exposed there. That's about, I don't know, two to three inch, maybe 50 to 70 mil or 50 to 75. And there are four pairs in there. Okay. So this is Cat6, so it's got the divider inside. You don't generally get that in a Cat5 cable. So we'll remove that. So just give it a snip, being careful not to snip any of the pairs. And that's that bit gone. Next thing to do is to untwist these pairs. I'll start with that one. You can either do it by hand like so. Or can just unpick one you can use a bit of that casing that you've removed there and the other way I don't know if that's actually quicker is to spin it over like that okay and same for all of them that's it so we've got our pairs untwisted there, looking nice and colourful. So the next thing I do is a screwdriver and I take each cable. I've got bottom of the screwdriver, the rounded part there. 
and all I do is just run it along with my fun on, thumb on the top just to straighten the wires out. So do it a few times maybe to get them nice and sort of straight. That's good enough just to get that twist out and run there. So I'll quickly just do those. That's it, so they're looking relatively straight there. That's my wires there, so twists are gone. So next thing is, I'm gonna take them and put them in the order of the colors. So for the UK, Cat5B, it goes white orange, so that's white with the orange stripe, then orange, then white green, And then blue. Then white blue. Then green. Then white brown. And brown. Okay, so I've got them in order there. I'm just gonna keep my thumb and hold them in place. What I do now is cut the ends off there so they're a bit more sort of ragged and I cut at a slight angle so they should pass through that plug easier so I'll just snip that there that's that done offer the end up important thing being on this one pins are facing up to the left is white orange so that's pins facing up there okay so you can just gently feel them going in that's it, you can feel them passing through and they should just go in there nicely. If you're having to force it, it's something's not right, so take them out and start it again. That's it, so I can then gently put them into the end. And the thing we'll find with this thicker cat six cable is the grip or crimping portion on the bottom of the plug, you probably won't get the outer casing into it. I wouldn't try and force it in because if those wires crease up on top of each other inside, you could rub off the insulation and it could just short the wires effectively. So that's it there and that is good enough. You can add a little rubber boot that slips on there and onto the wire there. If they're going to be moved about or flexed, it may be best to have the boot on just to protect any damage. But what I'm going to do now, I've got the wires through the end, so I'll separate the colour so I can double check before I crimp it. Because if they're not right, you can pull them back out and try again so you get them correct before you crimp it. So, white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And that's with the pins facing up. So next step is, that's my cheap crimping tool. And that one there, that's the portion there that's gonna push the sort of grip clamp on the end of the plug, well, the back of the plug, should I say. That side there, you can see it's serrated, well it looks serrated from a distance, but that's going to push each individual sort of pin termination into piercing each one of those wires. So that there, that will pierce each one of the cables there to terminate and make the connection. So that's my tool and I'll pass that through. So if I pass it through here, making sure I don't crease up my wires. The tools are generally shaped to it. You can get a more expensive tool. It'll probably cost you 40 to 60 pounds. It's got a blade here. So as you crimp those pins, it'll also trim the wires at the same time. I don't bother, but I'll show you why in a moment, but you just gently give that a squeeze and it pushes those pins in like so. So each one of those pins should pierce the wire underneath them. That's it, I'll just give it a few squeezes there. Not massively tight, just a sort of gentle sort of nip, I suppose. So that's that. That's now terminated. Still got the wires there, so we will remove those. Put it on the paper there. Try not to cut myself again. I'm just gonna take my Stanley knife now, and I've got the side up to the plug there, and I'm gonna gently just score 
and cut through. So just score them there. All I do now, give them a wiggle. And I can feel the insides have all broken. So I'll just score it again. And you can see they all drop off. And that's a nice, neat finished termination. I'm pretty sure that that's going to be good and reliable. But I'll quickly do the end and then we'll give it a test. Well, other end. Right, so now I've got my short patch lead connected with both the ends on. They look good. Hopefully they are good. But what we should do is give them a test. So one end into the sender unit, this end's powered. It's, I mean, this tester, I think, was about £16. I'm not sure. You can get them for about £3, but they're not as good, and they generally don't last very long. Uh, I've had several, and they'll last a little bit and break. If you're only going to use it once, I suppose it should be fine. Uh, the other thing, this should be protected from PoE, so if there's PoE on one of the Ethernets, it shouldn't blow the tester. But that ends then into the receiver end. So if it was a long run... Same principle as a patch lead, one end on one, one end on the other. Now I'll plug it in and it should count from one to eight, which it does. If any pin doesn't illuminate, there's a bad connection somewhere or a fault, or if two of the wires or two of the numbers go backwards, you've got a problem there as well because you've probably got some of your wires mixed up at one of the ends, so cut them off, start again. And that should be that, that's cool. Close up there of it counting. And you can see it counts one to eight. There is a G at the end as well. The G is for ground. So if you've got the metal plugs and they've got an earth casing on them, shielded cable, that G should light up as well. One thing I've noticed when there've been two of us doing the job, if someone's got one of the uh, connectors on backwards, so they didn't. They did it with the pins facing down, then terminated it. Theirs was counting one to a, well, eight to one, should I say? While the other end's counting one to eight. So eight to one and one to eight. You've got a plug on backwards. And turn it off when you're done. We'll just have a quick look. So we can see there. That's our nicely cut terminated Cat Six plug. All nice and neat.